This bass boat is a different breed of cat. The Pierce's started over 40 years ago, built on commitment. You can count on it. Innovation. That'll make it better. And hands-on attention to detail. Everything has a reason. With Bass Cat, you and your family get more than a great boat. You get memories that last a lifetime as part of the Bass Cat family. We're so happy to have you. Bass Cat Boats. You can expect more with family. Hello, everyone. I'm Rick Pierce. I want to welcome you to Bass Cat Boats. This is the home of Bass Cat and Yardcraft Boats. Bass Cat was started in 1971 by Ron and Jan Pierce. We're starting kind of in an unusual place because we're starting in the parts room. The reason we're starting in the parts room is we not want you to know that you can get a part for your old boat if you want it, and we do our best to service you as a customer. Because that's what's important to us, is servicing the customer. We hope you take time to watch all the video we've flipped here. It starts in the production process in gel coat, runs all the way through rigging. So we can talk about all the little niceties like the six bolt jack plates and the number two screws and everything from steering hoses right on through to the pivot tongue and the grab post on the trader. We've tried to cover everything we can. So if you just take a little time, watch the video, we're gonna to try to learn about the history of the company later. Some of that's available online. You can see it on our Facebook page through some of the albums that we have. There's some great photo albums there. There's some YouTube clips to teach you about new product. So if you just kind of hang with us, if you want to do a little bit of research, it's out there. And the one thing you might want to do is go to the owner's board. The owner's board is where everyone gets together that's a part of our Bass Cat family. So we hope you visit that. We hope you learn about the product. And we hope you make the decision to buy a Bass Cat boat. Thank you very much. This is where it all happens. This is where we take it from buckets to boats. This is where the magic begins in the gel coat department. This is where we put the process down with a lot of intricate care. We do all the tape work, basically starting with just an outline of the mold. We hand wax every part. So these parts are actually taken care of with tender love and care, going back to the Karate Kid movie. Wax on, wax off. From there, we start in with a process, whether it's white, white goes on right on the mold. If it's clear, then we shoot a nice 10 mil clear coat that goes down, and then we put a wet flake process application on top of that. But all of that flake is mixed right in the bucket. So it's actually integrated into the gel coat. When you do a dry flake, the flakes are sprayed on, mixed in the air in an atomization process, and they tack right to the gel coat. With a wet application, it goes right on the mold, just like paint on your car. It's a wet application. And it's a real nice process with a thick coating. As you can tell, these gentlemen take their time. You'll notice a lot of difference in this process that what we do is done with time and intricate detail. They'll work through this process. You'll notice the spray application we use takes a lot of time. It's not done in a quick two-shot process. They go through steps and low pressures and try to get that applied just right so we don't have a problem with the application of the gel coat. They'll work till about 1 or 2 in the morning and finish up. About 6 in the morning, that detail they put in that gives us that fit and finish we're really known for It'll be brought to a new process as that vinyl ester barrier coat, the barrier coat goes down last. That's going to be tacked right off there. In the morning, about 6 in the morning, they'll start putting fiberglass behind the back of these parts. And tomorrow, these boats will be from buckets to boats. The last process we talked about, the vinyl ester barrier coat, which was the last process in gel coat. We put down the gel coat in the first stage of the production. So we're going to start with the fiberglass lamination of this hull. This hull starts with the first laminate going down on the hull with our proprietary resin that's manufactured just for bass cap boats. That resin goes into the hull with fiberglass, and we put that first laminate in the hull. Then we come in behind that first laminate with 24-ounce roving. We like woven roving because it's a mixed product. It's all integrated, basically, feathering it in between. The woven roving is then cured into the first laminate. Once that first laminate is cured, we come back in with a second laminate. When we do the second laminate on that hull, we come behind that laminate and put a transom in it. So the full width transom is going in right on the hull in the mold. This is not your typical cut and paste operation. When we build this hull, we come in with those stringer assemblies and we set them into wet fiberglass. That fiberglass is put right in the hull and each stringer is made for that particular hull. It's not made 
and cut and fit to a different hole. It only goes in that one model. And then we come back and we put the floor on there. And that floor is the same thing. It's only made to fit that one model. So we've got a floor and a stringer that's all set in wet fiberglass. Once we have that wet fiberglass part, all of it's wet at this time, we come back and plastic that entire assembly. Once we seal that with plastic, everything that's open, it collapses it in just like a block of cheese at the store. You go to the store and buy a block of cheese, there's nothing in the bag but the cheese. This floor is just like that. Anything that's not designed to be in there is sucked out. And you can see through the process how it's sucking air out of this process. This is done by huge vacuum pumps we have that we unique to Bass Cat Boats. No one else has this process. Each floor, each stringer, each hull, all made to fit each other. And it's a very unique part. What you get into with that vacuum process, what makes it different is that other companies come in and put weights in their floor. And we did the same thing before this process. Now, we use this vacuum process no one else uses to suck those parts together. There was no way we ever got the vacuum process matched with weights. I don't care how much weight we used, we could not match what this vacuum process gets us. So let's spend a minute on transoms. As we look at the transom, this is a transom for a Cougar FTD, a Cougar, Jaguar, Puma FTD. They're all very similar to this, the era. This is our thicker transom for those boats. This transom is black. Most of them are done in a clear, and you see that brown fiberglass look. This one's just done black because we demo with it. This particular product right here is what's in this transom. You can see the thickness here, but you can see the thickness here. This is all fiberglass. This is sphere core. It's a product that's made a little differently, and we'll get to that in a second. But this is all woven, roven, and matte that's done through this transom. And you can see the number of layers of woven, roven, 24-ounce woven, roven, and matte. And it's basically 18 layers with four layers of sphere core in various thicknesses. As you look at sphere core, it's a ground fiberglass and micro balloon compound. And this is what it is. You can see the fine fiberglass. We've tore this piece so you can see it. We've sheared it off. Once this is done, it becomes an actual part of that transom in fiberglass. And it's, it's not real heavy right now, but it's actually glass, spheres, and fiberglass that goes ahead and penetrates with resin and makes one solid piece in that transom. You can see we've got our fiberglass, and we've got our mat, our roving, and our transom all in this. This is what we know, to our knowledge, is the strongest transom in the market. It's a really cool part we spend a lot of time on. They're all independently vacuum molded. We have water seal vacuum pumps we pull vacuum on this mold with to pull that transom, absolutely removing all the excess resin and all the air out of it to make a solid one-piece part that goes all the way across the back of your boat. And in the back of your boat, right in the middle, it's secured to the transom on your boat. And that's not done with putty. That's done with fiberglass. We actually go and put about 3 sixteenths of an inch of fiberglass on the back of the boat, and we bed that transom into that fiberglass. We set it right into that fiberglass, and we pull all the excess out and squeeze it in there with clamps. So it's not filled voids. It's a fiberglass part all the way through with no putty holding the transom, no putty in the floors and stringers. It's all one-piece fiberglass construction throughout. This bass boat is a different breed of cat. The Pierce has started over 40 years ago, built on commitment. You can count on it. Innovation. That'll make it better. And hands-on attention to detail. Everything has a reason. With Basscat, you and your family get more than a great boat. You get memories that last a lifetime as part of the Basscat family. We're so happy to have you. Basscat Boats. You can expect more with family. What we're looking at right here is the stringer assembly that goes in a Pantera Classic. This is a 19-foot stringer assembly, and you've got three tops, and each of these chambers is different. It works like a reverse accordion, like a fan. In between each of these chambers is an independent foam chamber. This contacts the hull in the rear. These contact the floor, and the stringer contacts the hull. So we've got seven independent foam chambers on each side of a center ballast. This is on a Pantera Classic. When you go to larger models like the Puma FTD and the Puma and the Cougar FTD, they actually have eight chambers on each side with four tops. So a lot of floor contact, a real rigid truss house effect upside down. Now we talk about that truss house effect, 
Each of these contacts the hull, each of these contacts the floor. And these are each different models. So every model has its own stringer and its own floor assembly. All of your 20s, all your 19s, your 18s. The two 18s have two different stringers. The two 19s have two different stringers. Pantera 4 has its own stringer. And the same is true for your 20-foot hulls. They have their own stringer and their own floors. So each part has to be tooled to fit that particular boat. It's not a cut and paste affair where we cut one, kind of glue it together and make it fit that particular boat. It gives us a real nice flat contact so we're not sharp edge contacting on the hull. So the hull's not having a bridge, bridge truss right down against it that will press through the bottom of the hull and cause crazing on the outside. Each of these flats contacts the hull, so it's a real nice effect on the hull. We moved over to the boxing department. As we moved to the boxing department, we call it boxing going back to the 1970s. And these boxes were actually put in like boxes we pulled separate and fiberglass into the hull of the boat. Right now, we glass these to the deck of the boat, and then we come back and fiberglass them to the subfloor assembly. So the actual floor assembly will be fiberglass to this part, reinforcing that hull. This is a step assembly, has a foam box under it. Then this goes directly to the floor. This is a Puma FTD. Um, the Puma FTD, Cougar FTD, and some of the other boats have full box assemblies and finished boxes. Some of the other ones, like the Pantera 2 and the Sabre, they don't. They actually are inside finished box but it's not gel coat slick, it's smooth and brushed. The uh, petitions on this are all done in fiberglass. This is a pretty slick part right here on the front. This pulls all the flex out of the front trolling motor area. It's a really neat thing because it takes that flex out of the deck where that trolling motor works. Then again, we come to the back side of that trolling motor and use those 3 8 plates under it to support the trolling motor bracket. But this is boxing. This is where the deck assembly on a Puma FTD is. We've got a hull assembly we're gonna look at and we'll move right on through it. Well, let's spend just a minute. This is a Cougar Advantage Elite hull. The Cougar Advantage Elite, basically all the 20-foot hulls are very similar. The striping's different, but the integrity of the hulls is the same. The stringers, the subfloor, they're the same on all the 20-foot models. There's different molds for them, but they're the same parts, basically. This one's got the front foam chamber. All the rear foam chambers are in place, and then the floor is foamed. And you can see there's eight separate areas that we integrate foam into in these areas. That encapsulates all the foam. So all the foam is contained inside of these foam chambers. Down the road 10 years from now, none of that's gonna be in the gunnels of your hull absorbing water. It's all gonna be contained. As long as you keep the integrity of these boxes in place, you don't drill them, you don't not seal something, they'll be dry. And that foam will maintain throughout the whole life of this boat. Another thing you can notice right here is the width of the transom. The transom's full width. It runs from this point to that point, all the way across and depth wise. So that full transom, that 65 pound transom that we looked at out there, it stretches through this whole bottom and all the way across in full depth. It's a nice setup. This is a one piece construction hull right here, all vacuumed together with our vacuum process. Well, this boat, this Puma FTD, it just came out of boxing. We're standing in the finish department where the next step it moves into wiring, hanging all the parts and the pumps. The nice thing about that, as you out in your home, if you want to work on a pump on the lake and it's a problem, you can get to it. You can access it. You can get to every part in this boat. No different than we're going to do at the next step of this when we install it. Everything is put in at this stage of the game. So when your boat's done at this stage, it's going to be finished with the parts that you can access in the field. It's going to cut your cost of rigging. So when you go in to have a pump installed later, your service in the field is going to be less because the dealer's not going to have to charge you to remove a gas tank. He's not going to have to charge you to remove a seat box to install a bilge pump. There's so many things that people don't think about in service. And service is a big factor when you come to building a boat. This boat is in its first day that you could actually put this boat on the water. We could take this boat, we could move it right to the lake tomorrow with a console, a seat, and a motor and run this boat. It is a one-piece construction unit. All of the boxes are fiberglass together. Everything is sealed and seamed. We have one area in this boat we use to indicate use. Outside of that, everything is one piece. It should never give you any trouble. It's all done with double laminate glass. All the component boxes are glass to the hull. The deck and hull assembly is not made to ever come apart.
let's spend a minute and finish talking about the differences in bass cap boats. The differences in finish, they're easy to see for us. But for the average person, this isn't the enchanting part. This is the part where the work is. And there's a lot of things you don't realize. We spend a lot of time on countersunk holes. So every screw that goes into fiberglass is countersunk. And in that screw process, we use a square drive. So all of the bass cap screws are a custom ordered part. It allows you to use a number three Phillips with the same square drive bit, and one bit will do most everything on a bass cap boat. Pretty cool part. A lot of the things people don't realize when we mount the shock brackets and things like that, the hinges, the back of those has a special washer. It's a special neoprene bonded washer with a top stainless steel face head. And that little neoprene washer actually has to be made for us. So each one of them is individually stamped. We use the absolute heaviest marine grade carpet we can use. We use a 24 ounce carpet. It's really a 27, but it's rated at 24. This particular piece of carpet, these are identical size pieces. This is a competitor's 15 ounce carpet. This particular carpet in a 15 or an 18, this 15 ounce piece weighs 0.22 kilograms in the same size piece. This is our carpet. It weighs 0.36 kilograms. So their carpet weighs 60% the weight of a basket carpet. The actual denier, the strand weave, the needle stitching's crooked on theirs. Our needle stitching's nice and straight, good even stitching. Nice tight count on the weave. Nice tight count versus this. This is really not a very good carpet, not in our standards. Most all of our competitors use less carpet. We don't know of one that uses the same carpet we do. While we're talking about the differences in the bass cap boat, let's just spend another second here to talk about hoses. This is a steering hose. Every steering hose on these bass cap boats is sheathed from the helm all the way to the engine in a second sheath. This is a 1,500 pound Kevlar hose, so it's gonna protect it from chafing and abrasion and from actually having a hook that impacts this that puts a hole in your steering line, which would cause failure. So we're trying to reduce all the chances for failure we can. Jack plates on a bass cap boat are all six bolt plates. Most every other company, matter of fact, every other company uses a four bolt plate. All of our plates are custom made for a bass cap boat. They're eight inch offset, unless you get a Verado and it's a three inch offset or a four inch offset. But all the other plates are an eight inch offset and they're a six bolt plate. That six bolt plate gives you two more bolts. But not only is it just two more bolts, what it does, it prevents the fulcruming that other plates have, shorter plates and shorter rails, fulcrum in the middle of the transom and they dig into the middle of the transom, eventually causing that transom to flex over the center. With a full length rail, you support the entire transom. So that transom support, not only do we have the strongest transom, we have the best plate and the strongest plate. And it's also enforced by the fact that we have an aluminum plate on the inside of the transom at all three locations of the bolts. So we've got a half inch tie bar on the bottom, a half inch aluminum tie bar second up, and then the top plate with a bass cat emblem right on the top of the splash well. All of those are six bolts, and another cool thing about that, we only use fine thread bolts on those. So there's no coarse bolts there. They're all fine thread half inch bolts. A lot of little differences don't mean a lot to a lot of people. Think about that next time you're on the rough water out there. All right, while we're in the finish shop, let's just spend a minute here to talk about gauges and dashes and the things that we do that are different than other people as a whole. Things we've done for years since we got away from all the plastic dashes of the 80s. The dashes are done with individual holes, so each gauge is individually drilled. Each panel is cut just to fit that, whether it's your LCR or your gauge. And the bezels, they're all aluminum custom made parts. So there's a series of parts that are all custom made, whether it's this aluminum piece for the A10, or whether it's this one for this little touch pad right here. All of those are custom made. They've got a little groove in them, a little inset. And what that does is it gives you a real solid, rigid dashboard in rough water. It gets it in there where you can not have to worry about it down the road through your years of ownership. The average person's gonna keep that boat seven to 12 years. It's the little details like this, all the jack plate bolts, all the front panel, the wiring, there's so many things that make a difference in a bass cap boat that last you through your years of ownership, and that's what we're about. We're about giving you something that'll last as long as you want it to last. This bass boat is a different breed of cat.
The Pierce has started over 40 years ago, built on commitment. You can count on it. Innovation. That'll make it better. And hands-on attention to detail. Everything has a reason. With Basket, you and your family get more than a great boat. You get memories that last a lifetime as part of the Basscat family. We're so happy to have you. Basscat Boats. You can expect more with family. Basscat Traders, a lot of people think that's the strongest thing we do is build traders. They really feel like our traders are by far the best there are. Uh, we get a lot of accolades on them, so let's just spend a minute talking about traders. Basscat traders are a four inch channel on the most part. We build a three inch channel in Margay. We weld all the cross members in. And what we do when we do that is we try to get a good clean bead on everything. Of course, everybody wants to know about the steel. So let's talk about the steel for a minute. The steel on the trader, it's all US made. So the four inch channel is made in the Birmingham area. The tube's made in another location and the flat's all made in another location. As far as the paint and the primer, it's got an epoxy grade primer and a good hard paint on it that's a new style paint and then what we do with that is we top that off with gator hide and gator hide is so tough it's hard to believe gator hide is a polyurea urethane top coat in clear and uh, we waited till they could get it in the clear so we didn't have to do the rough finishes you know the rough finish texture stuff we're just not real big fans of that you're paying a lot of money for a boat and it ought to look good it ought to look good for a while so with the urethane top coat on it it actually resists chipping very well. And you've got that nice, clean, smooth, clear finish on it. And it's all painted and it's all striped. You've got double striping on the traders and uh, a lot of stuff like that people take for granted. And it's just one of those things we spend a lot of time on. We've gone with Optronics on LEDs on the Deluxe. We use truck light on the standard frames. The new halo light's really pretty cool too if you hadn't seen it. And that's a really nice option on the LEDs. Now let's talk about bunks for a second. Well, bunks are something that everybody's got a bunk. That's pretty simple. But we go to the extreme. This is trimmed down. This bunk is not two by six. It's trimmed down to about four and a half inches. And then we come in and we carpet the top of the bunk. And it's using that 24 ounce carpet. So it's really got good carpet on it. And we glue that carpet on top. And then we come back and we wrap that with another layer of carpet. So it's double padded. And these are all treated material. So we got two by sixes treated double padding, 24 ounce carpet, chamfered cut to fit. So it doesn't fit on a chine, it fits between the chines. And they're all special made. Every part on this trailer is welded to fit. And when you look at the front end, the bow's all nice and tightly done. And gosh, you know, you just really underestimate the quality of the, of the trailer itself with the two inch bow tube and the three eighths arms out of cold roll. You got two three eighths arms where most people have a quarter inch arm coming up. Then you've got the front end of it with the pivot tongue as an option. And this pivot tongue, it's got a four inch tube with an interior tube. So it's a double wall tube. And the cams are laser cut cams. So when you look at the laser cut cams, that doesn't mean a lot to people with DOM tubing and a laser cut cam, but there's almost no flex in that trader. When you pull the pins out of it, it doesn't rattle, vibrate, or move. So it's a really solid front end on a trader. When you look at the disc brakes and the vault hubs, the vault hubs come with a five-year warranty. The trader comes with a two-year warranty. Most people's traders only got a one-year warranty. All the lag bolts are all coated or stainless. So we've got stainless steel bolts. And all of our traders have got a fiberglass fender. So it's really a solid trader mount. We've done about as good a job on traders as we think we can do. And you don't want to underestimate the grab post, man. Everybody wants the grab post. Now, you're seeing a lot of aftermarket grab posts come out, just like the pivot tongue. We did that first. And now we're doing grab post, and everybody's going to wind up doing grab post. If you hadn't used one, it's probably the neatest thing to get in and out of a boat because you really don't understand how hard it is to get out of the boat by yourself unless you've had to do it at a boat ramp. With a grab post, you just grab it and swing off the front of the bow, and it's really easy. You know, back in about 1983, we started building our own trailers. And Dad and I started that. Uh, he'd weld them, and I'd paint them, and that was side of the process. And as you go through the process, you look at it and you think, well, it's just a trader, but not, it's not. Uh, we put a lot of effort in it, a lot of little details that we didn't even go into today, like canting the winch one direction so it's on an angle. And there are just so many little details in a Bass Cat trailer that make it a trader that's really respected in the industry to be one of the best traders out there. You know, we kind of took it with the same intensity and passion we put into our products on our boats. We built them out of U.S. steel. We do everything we can to do it a little different way. 
and even people who have moved from our product to others, they always come back and tell us what a great trailer they had and how much they've respected the trailer. And everyone seems to take the trailer and really appreciate the quality we've put in it. So don't you forget that when you go to purchase your next boat because we put a lot of effort in this trailer and it's more than just a boat purchase. It's a trailer purchase too. And we hope it's something you consider. Here we are in our new building, and this is where we rig the boats. Behind me right there, that's Mike Iaconelli's boat, and he's getting ready to go on a 14 tour, and you'll see that in the Bassmasters Classic, of course. And then, we've got a boat over here that's been through rigging, it's done, and this one's getting ready to have an engine put on it we haven't mounted yet. So we just wanted to clean up and mention a few details about rigging. When you look at rigging, everybody rigs a boat, everybody puts a motor on, but let's talk about something else, and that's the components. We use all engine company components. So your cables came from your engine company, your ignition switch came from your engine company, your throttle assembly came from your engine company, your hoses came from your engine company on your outboard engine hoses. The throttle bulb, which is the bulb, the fuel control bulb that goes on the actual hose came from the engine company. That doesn't mean a lot, but we could save a lot of money using other components. We tend to try to use the best there are and those that are warrantied by your engine company also. So those are little things you don't think about. And we just kind of wanted to throw that out there, plus the fact that we do do our own custom rigging in-house. And these guys have been doing it for a number of years. They're all certified on engine rigging, and they've got Verado certification on down. But we just want to say thanks a lot for looking at our video. We hope you've enjoyed the clips. We hope you learned something, and we hope to help you make a decision on your next bass boat. And we want to say how much we enjoy and the passion we have for building the product we've built for 43 years and the ability to continue to do that in the future. Hope you all have a nice season. Have a good season out there fishing. And let's go catch one. <laughs>